Hi, this is Asim. This is Sujoy. This is Amrita. And you're listening to Khandan, a Bollywood podcast about the three main Khans of the Hindi film industry. Amir, Salman, and Shara. Hi, you're listening to Khandan, a Bollywood podcast regular feed. Thank you so much for your support over the years. We now have a Patreon channel with bonus content and exclusive merch for those of you who would like to support us. Every dollar goes towards creating more and better content. Visit us at patreon.com slash Khandan podcast. Hi and welcome to a new episode of Khandan podcast. My name is Asim Berni and I'm joined with my lovely co-host Amrita and Sujoy. Hey Amrita, hey Sujoy. Hey everybody. Hello, it's been a while since we heard that intro. <laughs> it has been a while. I'm very rusty, guys. I'm very rusty. <laughs> this might be a very rusty episode in a, in a, yeah in general. You know, we might be a bit uh, you know shaking off the cobwebs and stuff like that. Um, how was your summer? <laughs> I mean, it was just like three weeks. So uh, let's not get carried away. <laughs> so Joy had adventures, though. So Joy went like all around the world. <laughs> well, not really. That Aju Baju me got. I just went to Edinburgh for the French Fest, and I also went to Spain to Barcelona for a long weekend. That's pretty cool, man. How was fringe? Any any cool things you saw there? I this time I like I did not intend to, but I watched a lot of Indian comics. I watched Rahul Subramaniam. I watched Anirban uh, uh, um, Chatterjee. I would like to think. Um, I also watched Kanan Gill, um, mm. and all of them were pretty good. Like uh, I don't know why I don't give them as much credit when I see them on like their streaming specials, but. When you watch it with an audience, it's pretty amazing, especially because in Edinburgh Fringe, it's not a big audience. It's literally like 100 people. And to control that, like because everything can go wrong, you know, when you're playing such a small room. And it's amazing how how well oiled that, uh, you know, their performance and their craft is because they've been doing this for a while. So, yeah, I was more accepting uh watching them live rather than on specials i think and kanan gill especially like he was really really good so uh, this is inside chat um a lot of times like these uh, indian comedians will come to london and do a show and i'm always asking sujoy sujoy you want to go and the rejection the speed of rejection i get from sujoy like i haven't <laughs> even typed out my message and sujoy already replies no you know i don't know how he does it but like he does not want to see so i'm really happy that he had to go all the way to edinburgh to finally appreciate these people doing yeah. their work so maybe we can watch a few of these in london yeah i don't know why but <laughs> i also was... watched like a 15 minute like segment of uru Jaftab as well and mm. she was all right she was all right mm. what about you amrita did you get to do anything um i went to madurai with my friends uh, and then we ate literally everything in sight. <laughs> um, I posted a few pictures in like another group chat and they were like, will you leave any animals? <laughs> because I was eating pigeon. I was eating rabbit. I was eating all sorts of things. Um, and they were all delicious. Highly recommend Madurai if anyone wants to go eating. Um, and then, animals ka hai, Amrita ka hai. <laughs> <laughs> none left <laughs> um and then honestly it's just been very chill yeah i think greta thunberg has booked a flight to come see you <laughs> <at> the <laughs> amount of animals you've eaten <laughs> um my summer was good i went back to belgium to see my lovely family i uh, went to portugal for a little bit i stayed at a hotel where the, uh, James Bond was shot. So that was pretty crazy. There were like all of these pictures and things like that. And fancy. I think Bond, who, which fancy, Bond? fancy. Oh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, the, okay. the oh, George oh, Lazenby really one. one. Oh, so yeah. it's actually a really good one. So it's not even a shitty one. It's not like Octopussy or something like that. Um, and yeah, the hotel was really nice. I had to go and get my own water and carry my own bags. Apparently, that's a big thing now in Indian hospitality. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that uh, thing today. The guy on uh, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was hilarious, that conversation. But anyway, I'm glad to be back. And I'm, guys, the thing is, 
I've watched so much Bollywood the moment I came back home because <laughs> my blood calls for it. Like 10, like <clears throat> at the, we were done. Like we like, uh, when we stopped recording the last episode, I was like, I need a break, man. I cannot do this anymore. I come back home and I was like, my, bl- I was like a heroin addict. I need to shoot, inject some Bollywood in my blood because I've been missing it for two, three weeks. And I went with the most Bollywood of Bollywood things. Even, you know, I've been going to watch Kabhi Khushi, Kabhi Gham in theaters. I've been going to watch Mohabbat in theaters. I could, you cannot be more Bollywood than that. But uh, we're going to be talking about that on Patreon more. So if you want to subscribe and listen to all of those things that we watched, all of the content that we missed but did, did watch over the break, it's going to be on Patreon to sign up for $1 um, and listen to that episode. Uh, but this episode, we're going to talk about some of the trailers that dropped and our main review will be Buckingham Murders, uh, which we just saw uh, yesterday. So let's talk uh, a bit about some of the trailers that dropped. Maa ko bhagwan li gaye. Papa ne khud ki jaan li li. Tu unke rishtedar ne panha di aur khari ke rahe basool kiya. Chhodna baatya sab. Kani bhot lambi hai aur maa ke pas vakt bhot bhot kam. Bhot kam. तो उड़ा देते हैं ना साली जेल की दीवारें फूलों का तारों का द फर्स्ट इज नॉट इवन अ ट्रेलर इट्स अ टीजर राइट सो इट्स अ जिगरा राइट द आर्यभट्ट विदंग रायना वसन बाला मूवी यस इट्स अ वेरी शॉर्ट teaser and i i have to be honest i i seem to prefer teasers to trailers just yes. generally so um amrita what did you think of jigra i loved it i am so excited like the poster of her on the street with the the puppet dragon head behind her i was so taken aback like for the first time in a very long time i saw something that was innovative and different and fun and like it just promised me things that uh indian film poster hasn't promised me in a very long time you know um the way that it was mimicking manga like it was just like amazing like i loved it like actual you know like it it felt like a actual like movie movie rather than just like content stuff mm. um and i i like alia like you know like i enjoy alia like doing the kind of stuff that she's doing here i think this is the register in which she excels um and i enjoyed vedang raina as i enjoyed the entire cast of the archies so i'm really looking forward to it and of course like wasn't bala like the man's never made a bad movie so mm. uh very excited for this one what about you sujoy Um yeah I am not as excited as Amrita but the trailer or the teaser sort of um cleared some confusions that I had ab- about the movie before uh, I had only seen the poster right um and I think it's going to be a prison break movie kind of a situation with um Vedang Raina who is the younger brother of Alia Bhatt's character in this movie who has been imprisoned on some sort of a uh, weird um you know accusations I suppose in a foreign land and it's her mission to rescue him in some way and I think I'm looking forward to that uh, it seems like a something that I would see in a Korean movie and uh, like um Vasan Bala you know knows the action genre well I think and I'm looking forward to seeing Alia Bhatt in this genre I think uh, we haven't seen her do an action movie and we'll see how that play you know plays out I'm mm. cautiously optimistic Where is this shot like wh- which which country are we supposed to I be in is it Thailand no, is no, it Japan is oh, it Japan okay, okay. Because there's like the dragon confused me. But yeah, me too. Not, yeah, so yeah, I, I don't know where. But then I thought maybe it's Bangkok because I don't th- imagine they can shoot an Indian movie in China, right? Like there's probably restrictions to do that. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, it's not China. It doesn't look like J- Japan. So I was like confused. Is Bangkok? Like where are we exactly? But uh, I mean, I, I couldn't find the inter- uh, information. But yeah, I don't know why lately. I, I mean, Twitter or X is a hell site at the moment, just generally. 
and but i have been seeing a lot of alia hate on there um i don't know if you you guys guys have come come across it and even like ridiculous stuff like she flares her nostrils too much i was like it's her body like how do you how do you control your nostrils yeah. like how does that even work you know um i don't know where this hate comes from everybody loved her last year when rocky and rani was coming out so i think she's great like i think she does a great job and i think this looks pretty pretty amazing and challenging like it looks like a challenge she's not like a she's not like a katrina cave right like she's like somebody who's a badass action action star who can be one like shilpa shetty or even you know katrina cave she's like a very small individual so having her do like a full on action movie after motherhood must mm. be a big challenge right and taking that on so i think it's already a great thing that she's doing this she's really leading the movie like she is the one that's the star of the movie and i think that is amazing you know like being a uh, you know a poster star and we've also already said that she is one of those female actresses that can really open up a movie so i think that's great for alia too the visuals are amazing the setting is really cool um and i think also just it's cool to see vasan bala as a filmmaker you can really see the progression of him as a filmmaker right like every movie he makes is bigger is more ambitious he's yeah. telling like a bigger story and that's not something that every filmmaker is e- able to do or allowed to do and i think that's just cool to see that kind of progression you know i'm i'm very excited for jigra um so yeah i think the the trailer really really worked for me i even like the uh, meri behna hai remake uh which almost felt like um social network you know like when they do these choir versions of these songs <laughs> and they do the this with song i thought it was just kind of a cool a cool kind of a way to to do this uh, so yeah i'm excited for jigra when is it coming out anybody know uh early next month i think Okay. Uh, okay. October 11. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Uh second trailer that dropped was and actually the movie's coming out in 2 weeks time already. Uh Devara part 2, part 1, sorry, Devara part 1. <laughs> Is it Devara Devara I don't know how to pronounce Devara, it Devara I Devara. think Okay okay um you just you just saw the trailer just now right Amrita I mean I had a quick look Yeah what did you think Um genuinely like this is the kind of movie where it doesn't really matter what the plot is I've seen a lot <laughs> of people you know uh argue on Twitter that this is a remake of this movie that movie genuinely it doesn't matter um mm. this is going to be a spectacle i saw an interview that um the cast did and the cast is Saif Ali Khan um Junior NTR and Janvi Kapoor um and they did an interview with uh, Sandeep Reddy Vanga i think <laughs> which why <laughs> i don't even understand <laughs> but uh they were like talking about like all the set pieces they shot etc and there's a, apparently a lot of like underwater sequences and you know like uh giant action pieces etc um and you know like people are going to go watch that spectacle it doesn't really matter like you know like oh is this like the plot of the century like what's the dialogues like nobody cares it looks like bahubali in water basically yeah. <laughs> like, like pani wala bahubali the that's the vibe <laughs> so what do you think of the trailer i'll give you my honest thoughts the trailer reminded me of shamshera like Ooh. it's literally oh, yeah. the same plot <laughs> like father mm-hmm. died and the son has to redeem that same mm-hmm. arc and that's been seen you know for ages in bollywood i guess um and the cg looks shit to be honest it's such an expensive movie i'm sorry man i don't buy it 
uh, this movie is does not seem like my kind of vibe. I I will definitely go watch it with you, Asim. But mm. um, I I th- I don't think I'll be enjoying this movie. I am excited to see Saif Ali Khan as the villain, though, because he always chooses scenery when it's like when this is offered to him on a plate, and he'll be like you know total in uh, langrata yogi mode. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought about when I saw him with that yeah. shitty haircut. That he has, you know? uh, no offense for anybody that has that haircut, but <laughs> I'm sure there are people that have that haircut. Uh, it's a shitty haircut. <laughs> Says a man with no hair. <laughs> so then you know it's a really shitty haircut. I'd rather be bald than have that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I I have to say there's a severe lack of Janvi in that uh, trailer, yeah. though, right? Like I didn't see her once. I, I don't think no, no, we will. She's, like, a, she's, she's a, yeah. She like when so um I f- if the thing is like I've just been bitten so many times that I don't trust it anymore. But the way the trailer is cut. uh the like one of the villains says you know like we need a secret weapon to bring him down him being like junior ntr and uh then they cut to janvi and so i'm just like oh like is like janvi going to be the secret weapon that brings him down um but that would be a level of plotting that i'm just like oh like is that going to happen hmm. i don't know hmm Yeah. One thing I must say though, the trailer is 2 minute 40 minutes, 2 uh, minute 40 seconds long. Can we do away with like trailers that are so long that they pretty much give away everything and you know That's what I'm saying. That's why I prefer a teaser more than to a trailer yeah. with like Jigra, right? I'm excited for Jigra and like Actually, I I I was excited when I was seeing the Devara songs. I thought, oh, this mm-hmm. looks actually quite cool. I was really happy to see Janvi dancing. Like I was, I'd forgotten that I only see her dance on Instagram for like training, and I'm like, what training? Kar rahi hai? Dance kab karegi? You know, like I don't like I don't see the songs. Like, and she's such a good dancer, right? Um, I I mean, I I I I I feel she's a good dancer. I don't know, um, uh, but uh. It was just good to see her have fun on screen, which it feels like Bollywood doesn't even allow her or give her those kind of projects where she can actually have fun. She's like stuck in a freezer, she's stuck in a helicopter, she's stuck in a bad marriage, she's stuck in Auschwitz. You know, like there's no fun to be had. But like here, she's having fun. She has to go south to have fun. You know. Um, And then the people complain, why do we not have heroes and heroines? Because those movies are not. That's one thing I have to say, and clearly I have not spoken for like weeks, so I have a lot to say, and I'm speaking really <laughs> fast. I understand why I'm doing this, but you know, I think this teaser dropped the same day um, that uh, Anubhav Sinha uh, Netflix mm-hmm. thing uh, dropped. What is it called? The Flight High. I movie? see. Yeah, I see something. Yeah. yeah. On seven. Yeah, wasn't that already made with Vidya Jamal? Already, I think he also had a movie like that. <laughs> Number one Vidya Jamal fan, I know his IMDb thing. Um, but I was like, and I don't know what that hijack is about. I, I'm probably thinking it's something to do with Pakistan or Islamic terrorism or something like that. No, is it not? Yeah. So back uh, like 20 years ago, there was a flight that was hijacked by. uh these islamic terrorists mm. who forced it to land in kabul um Allah. and they were basically working under the orders of the isi apparently but then even allegedly yeah and then uh, i think it was actually established like i don't think it was even like one of those allegedly ah, things okay. and then what happened was they needed like uh there were like a bunch of like these talibani guys that were like in um that were in indian prisons at the time and one of them was actually uh, that guy khalid uh, khalid umar like what what's what's his name the 911 guy mm. uh, so like they got them out so there were three of them and they exchanged them for the plane full of hostages and then uh, they went on like at least like one of them went on to do like 911 Mm. So it's like the shared like, universe of terrorism. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when that happened, obviously, like when that happened, actually, like we didn't really know who those guys were. Like they, they were just in Indian prisons, and I think even the Indian government was just like, "Oh, like we got like another bunch of like terrorists. Who cares?" Um, and then this whole thing happened, and I think that's when the whole like, "Oh, the Taliban are aligned with." 
Islamic terror. Like that's when the world came to know about that stuff. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, so that was like a big deal. It went on for a few days. Like everyone was just plastered to the TV. It was like a huge event in India, basically. So that dropped and then Devara dropped. And there's also the trailer from um, that movie with Surya and Bobby Deol. I don't know what it's called, but it looks pretty amazing. Uh, I'll try to uh, IMDb the name while we're talking. Um, but I was like, man, South cinema is doing that level of filmmaking, whereas like Bollywood is still doing this hijack, real drama bullshit that nobody is being happy. Like the people that should be happy are also not happy with Anubhav Sinha, right? Like they're also like complaining, why did you make it? Why did you make these people human or something like that I, I didn't even follow it i was on holiday i was on, at the pool but i was like man the ambition even with lesser budget or lesser sci-fi or whatever to co- what bollywood is doing you know i understand janvi goes to south to have fun you know um it there's just no comparison between it so even though it's nothing groundbreaking like you said shamshera i saw bahubali in the water I mean, at least it's going to be fun and made with, you know, love for cinema and like, you know, willing to give us entertainment and something visual and something. And at the moment, the way things stand in Bollywood, that's enough for me. That is like good enough, you know. I I would ask him to that, like... uh, when you say love of cinema and visual and all of that, I've been bitten by that bug way too many times to have faith in Southern cinema itself. Like we've seen Kalki happen. We've seen like a lot of, uh, like we have seen the KGF movies. We've seen the other Prabhas movie. What was that? Salar. So, mm. yeah. Uh, but I feel those were necessarily, I, I, maybe this is wrong, my mm. thing, but like I don't feel Devara is trying to be a pan-Indian movie. Whereas I feel with all of those that you've mentioned, add Liger to it. All of those were trying to be this pan-Indian kind of phenomenon where I'm not sure this is trying to be. This feels more in line with Pushpa. Hmm. Where it's 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 their movie, they want to make it, and then if it's massively successful, great. Whereas I think the intention for Kalki and for Liger and all of those others was always, oh, we're going to make the next Bahubali. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just the vibe I'm getting. But I also agree with your My vibe is because I see all of Devara promotions via Karan Johar's feed. And that's why I'm (laughs) getting that, you know, that Mm. it's it's trying hard to be Pan-India. So I'm seeing it through the same lens as, you know, uh, oh, this is yet another attempt at this is yet another Salar in the making or yet another K- um, uh, Kalki in the making, which I don't like. So we'll see. Right. We'll see how they were up and out. <laughs> Last trailer that dropped is Vicky Vidya Ka Wo Wala Video. <laughs> और फिर बुढ़ापे तक उसे देखते रहते हैं तभी तो देखो कितने खुश रहते हैं तुम मैं क्या सोच रहा हूं ना कि हम लोग भी अपनी स्वागत का वीडियो बना लेते हैं थैंक यू बिजली विभाग मस्ती भरी रात है सोनी कुड़ियों का भी साथ है ऋषिकेश में है क्या कोई मुझसे अच्छा दोनों हाथों से मेहंदी लगाने वाला अरे लड़की के बुआ के तो हाथ नहीं थे उन्हें भी मेहंदी लगा दी हाथ नहीं थे लगाई कहां कंधों पे कंधों पे <laughs> so, before Asim says anything, right, we went to watch Buckingham Murders at the cinema on Friday night and we were briefly talking about it and then the topic came about, you know, recent heroines and all of that and our friend Yam um, it was saying, you know, how she finds the, uh, the current crop of heroines to be not as crush-worthy as the ones that we were, uh, you know, uh, wh- where a, when we were growing up, right? And Asim was like, you know, Tripti Dimri is hot, but she's not like 97 hot. And I didn't she, use word hot. I don't use the word hot. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Pretty. I said pretty. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> and, then, and then Asim said, 97, what are you doing but where is the lie where is the lie no my my thesis was 
I mean, like I've been on board of Tripti Dimri from the start. You know, huge fan of Tripti Dimri. She's unbelievable, beautiful, unbelievable. But she's very, you know, that tweet is like, this is a face that has seen a mobile yes. phone. She has that. She is twenty twenty four pretty, or yes. she's eighteen twenty pretty. You know, nineteen forties pretty. That kind of pretty, like Bulbul, great. She did amazingly. I hundred percent buy it. Ninety seven pretty is a very specific pretty. It's like yeah. Sunali Bendri pretty. Is Kashmir uh, Charisma Kapoor pretty? Is Madhu, Madhuri pretty? Is you know my that. wife pretty? Is Amrita pretty? You know, like ninety seven was. <laughs> a pretty year like we were all very beautiful at that time and she's not that ki- same kind of pretty that's what i was saying in like secret the, between yeah, us yeah the 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 makeup is off right like mm. the makeup that she's wearing the uh but also the hair. Uh, but the also volume like, of hair yeah, yeah there's something with the volume thing. of hair because yeah. our hair products are too uh, good now yeah. we used to have to work with shitty hair product we basically had mousse and hairspray. We used to do the back comb. I don't yeah. know if you remember that, but yeah. we used to get the the back comb for the for the volume. If you are talking about the hair, the hair of all the male people in this trailer is also off. Like everybody is wearing like hundred. They cannot do the hair because the products are too well too, and they're kind of reproducing something. I cannot. You know? I cannot stand the. I don't know what he's wearing. He's it's a monster that uh, Rajkumar uh, Rao is wearing in this uh, trailer, man. It's just too much. And and Vijay Raz, oh my god, that that is on purpose, I think, for comedic, you know, uh, whatever. But yeah, why did they make the hero of the movie wear that wig? It's beyond me. <laughs> but also, like Rajkumar Rao is. Um... He's essentially playing the same character as he plays mm-hmm. in three two, right? Like, or it's yeah. this three universe. Yeah. Um. But he's anyway. Uh. But I did. I mean, I will watch it. Um. My problem with Tripti is that I don't think she's a very good dancer, or if she is, then she is hiding her light under a very large bushel because we I haven't see seen it. anything yet, though, I've right? Seen, like. like little bits and pieces and I've also seen like uh, behind the scenes like you saw tiny bits of it in the trailer but there's apparently going to be like one of those um, cr- post-credit songs you know yeah that, um, yeah, definitely like feels like a post-credit song yeah. yeah and I've seen the B- the BTS of that particular video being shot and I did not care for it like it mm. just looked it looked very generic Um, And the thing is, like, I don't think people put enough respect on the art of the Bollywood item song Mm. um, because it requires a level of attitude. And, like, you have to, like, there's a reason why everyone watched Toba Toba and they came away talking about Vicky and they had, like, absolutely nothing to say about Tripti. Um, Not even the fact that, you know, I mean, because Tripti, obviously, she wasn't dancing, but she was posing. Um, but the way she, like, sorry, the, the way they shot her in all these songs is like it's like Kante or Das, you know, like yeah. that's that's how they're shooting her, and that's yeah, you just move your hip this way, move your boobs that way, and that's not like that's yeah. what they're asking of her, right? So I don't think she's gotten a real dance song yet. Also, choreography in Bollywood is down the drain together with this like it's not a good time you know and which uh, is yeah. funny because like when Ayushman and Bhumi Pednekar made um, uh, what is the name of the film the Dam Laga Ke Haisha um, and they did that uh, that song right like the the homage and they brought yeah. back Kumar Shanu and like they made the, the song it was so good. Like the choreography was on point. Uh, it was like Rekha Chini Prakash. Doing yeah, they brought the back. Thing. Yeah, the, uh, um, it was great. It was absolutely great. And it was pitch perfect. Um, and so even if they didn't know exactly how to do it, they had at least that movie to look back at, you know, and like use that as a reference. I don't know why they didn't do that. So mm. Mm. I don't know. This like this looks like a streaming movie to me. To be honest, like yeah. I I uh, and it, like you mentioned, Damlaga ke Haisha. I think it's very reminiscent of that kind of thing. Yeah. Also, I felt weirdly of g- Guns and Gulabs. You know, when you were talking about Rajkumar Rao, there was that other series too, right? Like that was set in the um, in the nineties. It was like uh, love stories that were like. 
Yeah. Do you know Taj what? Mahal something is that? The yeah, one? 1989 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I think they just keep, they're keeping going back to this nostalgia kind of trope which I don't necessarily think it's working for me because I was not nostalgic of that era. I you know except I've, for the women <laughs> like 96 right? 97 mein kya zamana tha you should have seen like a uh, full uncle when, you know when we were growing up in our teens and uncles were like madhu bala bhai janti you know it's pretty much that <laughs> uh, yeah so joy was loving that um yeah but i i'm not as nostalgic for that period and i i've made it a claim many times i just don't like small time movie a small time village movies it just grates me and annoys me i don't like the clothes i don't like the thinking i also just don't think it's realistic like the story seems to be that on their wedding night they make a sex video uh, a home video and then that gets released like that's out in the open so it's basically sex no, tapes plot right i think right? somebody steals it and then now they need to like bring it back Like it's yeah, not, but it's so not they, they, they're the one that have shot it, right? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 so yeah, that yeah. just seems very weird to me. Like, I don't feel, I don't know, maybe, again, I'm not like aware of how sexuality used to work in 97 in India, but it just seems like a very odd thing to me to be the premise of a movie. But uh, yeah, I, I just feel something false in it. What I do like about it is that, These these are loud movies. Like the comedy is very loud, mm-hmm. and I like in the trailer that Tripti Dimri gets a moment to be loud comedically mm-hmm. in the trailer, which I think is something that when they cut a trailer, they don't like. They don't allow the women characters to be, and I think then it's like, oh, there's no reason for you know uh, she's just gonna have like a flower pot role, and I don't think this is the case for this one. I think also just generally, I think Rajkumar Rao needs a strong. presence around him because he's not that strong as a like a performer for me um like any of his solo movies be it like newton be it shrikant they've not really really worked that well right it's more when it's more of more people around him like stri or like uh, what was the one with uh, bareilly ki barfi these kind of movies work better when he has more of people around him um But yeah, that's just my thinking. I think. Uh, Did you guys I, though uh, recognize Archana Puran Singh playing what actually Seema Pawa plays in all of these movies? Archana Puran Singh has been replaced <laughs> in in this role. No, I didn't notice. I didn't notice she was in it actually. Yeah. I was just very happy to see Malika Sharavat again. <laughs> I was gonna say I was more excited for her yeah. than anything, and she delivers that one line with so much. I didn't. I. Maybe I was a Malika Sharawat fan. I don't. For, I don't remember anymore. I'm like looking back very fondly towards her now. Um, yeah, I think she she's good. I think I'm. I'm more excited to see her on screen than anybody else. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting casting choice for sure. Yeah, and good for her. You know, good yeah. for her for, for be coming back and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So let's see Vicky Vidya ka wo wala video. <laughs> What a title, man! What a title. Any news on when the new DI is joining us? I read up on her. She is tough. Oh, oh, get off. Stop. Stop right now. Missing child, Indian family. Okay, so time for our main review which is Buckingham Murders. Is it the Buckingham Murders or the Buckingham, Buckingham, Buckingham Murders? Buckingham the Buckingham Murders. Um, Karina Kapoor's new movie directed by Hansel Mehta. Um, this actually, funny enough, this movie came out at the the London Film Festival last year, I think. Mm-hmm. And I was really trying to get some tickets, but as usual, PR companies, uh, Bollywood PR companies, do not do a great job because they're badly treated by the production companies in India, uh, and uh, that was a mess. I couldn't find tickets, and I missed it out. Um, so I was really, the, and the other thing is, Karina Kapoor has been really plugging this movie throughout the year and a half. Mm-hmm. Like everybody talks, uh, asks her, "What what are you excited about? What are you working on?" and she always plugs the booking of murders and i think it's also because she produced the movie which i didn't wasn't aware of um and uh it's gotten like a not a huge release i would say right it's like a kind of like, it didn't get like a huge push 
I genuinely thought it was a streaming movie yes. and then I only realized that it was out in theaters when you guys were talking mm. about booking tickets. Yeah. And then it was really hard to find a show that was playing at a theater near me at a time that was convenient for me. So yeah. it's definitely a limited release, I think. Yeah. So this is the IMDb plot summary. It's a grieving cop played by Karina Kapoor who loses her child to murder and moves to another town where she's tasked with investigating the disappearance of a missing child, exploring themes of trauma, grief, the immigrant experience and our need for closure. Um, so yeah, Hansel Mehta directed this. And I also read that they're looking to make this into a series. Um, but that was an article from last year. So I don't know how mm. it's evolved now, like where they are now. Um, yeah. Uh, quick thoughts. Uh, Sujoy, we watched it together. What did you think of, uh, the Buckingham murders? Um, how do I say this? <laughs> uh, I am a big fan of this genre, like small town, uh, you know, police people with, uh, you know, um, who are stressed out with their own issues. They have a lot of emotional baggage. They are going through their own issues. And then some crime happens in the town where everybody involved sort of seemed to have a motive. It's pretty much the same formula, whether you look at Nordic Noir or, or British grown police dramas, be it Happy Valley, um, Broad Church, and then there's the killing and uh, even the Kate Minslet show, Mayor of East Town, right, that came out. Um, all of these sort of similarly follow a sort of uh, formula, which this show very much commits to. But I think uh, within the span of a movie, it's very difficult to a convey the dread and the dreariness of a setting like this. B, it's also trying to show some sort of a racial tension element in this, which it failed uh, to do so in 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 my opinion. But I am happy to see Karina in this role and that. You know, she wanted to be associated with a genre like this and play this protagonist in a movie like this. And she put her money where, where you know, where she wanted to and actually made this happen and come into fruition. I'm really happy for that. Having said that, this is a very much um, a streaming movie. Uh, it's a very much a six out of ten movie for me. Mm. Okay. What about you, Amrita? I, th- I know you're a, jo- a fan of the genre too, right? Yes, I'm a huge fan of the genre. Um, and I would maybe give it like a 7 out of 10 because I also want to give this movie props for humanizing all the characters that we see. You know, like even when... Uh, like it, this didn't really deliver on the part where... I was confused as to like who the the murderer was or what their motive was, etc. Um, I think all of that gets telegraphed pretty early on. Um, and I knew that the eventual murderer was going to play a significant part, if not was actually the murderer. Like I knew that pretty much early on, like before the interval. Mm-hmm. Um, because this movie, it just really tell the characters really telegraph a lot about who they are and, mm-hmm. um, how they would behave in certain circumstances. I think the lack of tension that Sujoy is talking about comes down to the way this movie is plotted. And it is something that I noticed immediately because I am such a big fan of the genre and I watch it so much. Um, traditionally, when you see something like this, we start in one of two ways. One is we see the victim and we start the movie with the victim and the, we as an audience build some kind of empathy or some kind of bond with the victim so that that memory keeps us going and keeps us invested in the stakes of the movie. Mm. or we start with the investigator arriving at the scene of the crime and then they become our entry into the world in which the murder has taken place. And then we are discovering things as they are, you know, uh, experiencing Mm. it. And therefore we are building up 
our emotions as we go through with it. And then the tortured investigator, which is like a trope character, uh, that, you know, the trauma, whatever it is that they're dealing with, is something that we see in flashbacks. And it is very much treated as extra detail that helps round out the character and eventually at a certain point allows you like closer to the climax allows you to understand why this person is so invested in this particular murder. Mm. But the way this movie is built, we start with the investigators trauma. Yeah. It's very linear in that way. Very linear. Yeah. And so it's very much this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened. It is not, you know, like there is very little tension in the plotting. So you're not being pulled, like there's not, there's not much for you to wonder about. There's not much for you to discover about the different characters. Even the, the character, the, the husband and wife that we see in this particular story who are at the, um, uh, you know, at the crux of the whole murder mystery. Um, even with them, you're not really discovering things about them. It's pretty much telegraphed as soon as you meet them. You know, the way they behave with each other, you immediately get the feeling that, oh, like, you know, there's like this happening. Mm. Um, so that's basically, a, you know, it's a skill issue in my, in my personal opinion. Like the, the writers needed to watch a few more British uh, crime series <laughs> and then, uh, then do it. But I just want to, uh, I'm just very impressed by the level of performances. I thought the performances were like really great. I thought Karina was so good in this. Um, and also uh, I went to see this with a friend of mine. And the very first thing that she said to me in the interval was like, my God, she's done absolutely nothing to her face. Like she's not done any Botox and you can like really see it. And I was like, yeah, because like if you have that face card, why would you want to do anything with it? You know, like it's it's perfect as it is. Um, and they also like very unusually for an Indian production, they hired actual British people to play British people with the yeah. exception of Sakib. Uh Sakib? Sakib. 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 Uh, with the exception. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Indias, that yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> Who plays Indrani, which is like very funny. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sakib is very definitely an Indian kid, you know, like, and so he's speaking in that. And this is like probably one of those little things that you will only know if you've lived in the, in the United Kingdom. But uh, the accent you know, sort it's of like off. gives it away. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, that's not how Sakib would talk. Like yeah. uh, it's too posh for Sakib. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I thought that was like a really interesting, it was like, an, and it was interesting that they actually set it in the middle of um, race, like racial issues between Sikhs and Muslims in the United Kingdom. I did not see that coming. So that was just like, oh, I didn't see that happen. And also like, you know, like it starts with a guy who's like doing, who's like a shooter. And I was like, that's not the UK either. But um, yeah, uh, overall, I would say like a seven out of 10. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it, on the one hand, it's interesting because it does seem like very rooted in how the UK works in its mm -hmm. writing uh, because it is touching on certain something. But then there are some things that just don't happen, like, a guy shooting people in a bowling alley that yeah. it, it, you would, it would be with a knife and it has literally literally happened like a couple of weeks ago it's just the guns in the uk is not a thing that yeah. criminals yeah. especially like a um like it feel felt feel like a homeless person right like he yeah. didn't have access to it just doesn't it, that seems like a very american thing it doesn't seem like a uk thing but i think a lot of the the uh, the kind of themes are very very british i feel and yeah. you need to have an understanding of how this country works to it and it, it feels funnily enough the way it deals with diversity is 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 very british in a way because i was watching um uh, slow horses i don't know if you guys watch slow horses it's an apple tv show um and it's getting a lot of praise in like uh 
like nerd critic film critic circles and it reminds me in a way of downtown downtown abbey where a lot of these americans were on the show like oh my god downtown abbey have you seen it and stuff like that and for british people it was like just the most basic show that they see all the time and yeah. i have the same thing with slow horses that it's the same thing all the time but it made me think of how diversity is dealt with in british tv where it's actually never really dealt with um you know they it's it's mentioned slightly like some people there's going to be a minority character in the yeah. background like the second but it's never like they never have a conversation about their race they never have a conversation about their nationalities and it feels odd they never have you know like in um uh uh in the bucking of murders you have a a, a black character speaking with Karina Kapoor's character but they never talk about the racial implications of being minority women in a white british force right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we understand that there's something there but they never explicitly talk about it and that felt so british to me more than anything else i was like this is exactly how britain talks about diversity by not talking about it mm-hmm. and that is that you need to be inherently understanding british tv to be able to recreate that yeah and i think the recreation is what i like the most because um i i get your point amrita that it, this is not different from any other british shows we've seen but i think for the audience they've probably never seen a british show you know mm-hmm. they've never seen this kind of thing and they've definitely not seen it with karina kapoor and i got to just give props to karina like a on a face card like you could just make a movie by putting a camera on her face for 2 hours and i would watch it like just her face right and it's freaky cuz i just watched uh, k3g uh, yesterday in theaters and she was playing the poo character the quintessential karina kapoor character and then the day before i saw bucking murders and i was like man she's so pretty man this like karina h <laughs> karina is my vibe like i find her more beautiful now than i ever did back in the back in the day i think she's so amazing um but we know because she's been a performer for so long and i know uh, amrita the next uh, essay is going to be on karina so i'm very excited about that um but she has mannerisms karina kapoor has certain mannerisms the way she opens her eyes the way she shakes her head the way she modulates her voice you know none of that she does in this and she adapts so well yeah. to british cop tropes that is like wow like i don't think we pay enough respect to karina kapoor as an actress she is able to do this without even missing a beat and i think it's amazing the only thing she not able to pull off is jogging because she clearly has never <laughs> jogged in her life <laughs> karina has never jogged she does yoga she does pilates she does not jog and that is shown in bucking also up. i appreciate that she didn't attempt to do a british accent because yes. she knew that she would be ripped apart if yeah, she yeah. tried that and that was a very smart decision and also i i don't feel it was needed at all like it wasn't yeah. needed like um, yeah it it added actually more depth to the character like also they never mention her husband they never mention who the her son's father, yeah. father was i thought that was amazing didn't need it at all maybe they might bring it in in like bucking a murder 2 or 3 if it ever goes that far but i think it it was a very interesting way of telling the story um and can i also say like I was going to watch like I said I was going to watch this last year at the BFI I'm glad I didn't because Jane Jaan also dropped last year remember mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think having those movies together that closely might have hurt Buckingham Murders uh, a little bit more because it's both both these deep lamb karinas mm-hmm. and it's in a way good that they've been spread out a little bit and especially uh when there's that club song uh, uh sada uh, so sada good. pyar to dia yeah, it's such a good bali sagu man bali sagu is back is with it? that yeah he, wow. he did that song yeah so good yeah. i'm telling you the 90s man like we knew <laughs> what good music was we knew what like people look like yeah I watch I've listened to it at least 10 times already to the to that good. song it's so it good so but good. that song really reminded me of the karaoke song in Jane Jaan like the way yeah. it's that moment one moment where Karina Kapoor's character lets loose she dances she's having fun for a second and I, I think 
it's good that we had a bit of space between those releases because it might have hurt them. And you know the way Indian media can be about certain things and it would have locked Karina Kapoor maybe in one way or the other way. And I, I think she's unlockable, man. She's like a superstar, man. Um, I, she's amazing in this. Yeah. Speaking of what you said about the lack of representation or lack of uh, talking about diversity by not talking about it, uh, the, the 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 guy who plays um, uh, the the DI, his name is Ash Tundon, and he's done like Coronation Street, he's done Buckingham uh, Murders, but he's also done a, a Casualty and Bodyguard, I think, and he's pretty much in that same role of the 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 Indian guy in the force, you know, or the guy in the Indian family who's a doctor in the neighborhood or something like that. It's yeah, it's and uh, what a good hire for him uh, to be in this mo- movie. Yeah, and Keith Allen is in this too. Uh, Lily Allen's uh, father, you uh, know, he plays a uh, an Alfie Allen from Game mm-hmm, of Thrones. Mm-hmm. It was playing uh, so that was also kind of funny to see. Who him does he play? Show. He's the commissioner, the, oh, the Miller. Okay. He's playing the Miller. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, what did you think of um, What did you think of Ranveer Brar in this? He's also playing a role. He's okay. so good. <laughs> My God, he is so good. He's absolutely vile, and he is perfect in it. But. But <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll be tandoori chicken. <laughs> 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 and, and I also like the fact that when he's actually uh, uh, kills somebody, he does it with a cooking pot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, is, this is my weapon of choice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what was like uh, what what I really liked about it is the fact that Ranveer Brar has this entire audience full of women and probably gay men for all I know I don't know uh, but he's like they're all just like oh my god he's so charming like the number of times that I have had people come up to me and be like oh my god I love Ranveer Brar I watch his videos all the time he's inspired me to cook because I love him Nim is one of the our friend Nim who's been on the show before like Nim is one of them and he absolutely uses that capital to take his character here to all these like really low down places and in his scenes with Sarah Jane uh, Diaz like um, uh, who plays Indrani um, that I, I just kept thinking of that you know like where he's just being like this love rat uh, to borrow a, a Britishism um, and He's just like, I don't even like I it's and that's like one of the things that I makes me like this movie a lot because I don't know, like, do I believe in Rani when she says that she's just a grief counselor or whatever, you know, bullshit and excuse that she came up with? Like, do I believe her or like, mm. do I not? Like, what is it? Because clearly his wife has a different uh, perspective on it. Um, but also <laughs> the wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's because uh, uh, Indrani says, "Oh, her pretty, she's a psycho." <laughs> a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I I find it interesting casting because I, I don't have friends that like Ranveer or know of him necessarily, and I feel he's always had a very like a flash of creepiness in him. Like oh. whenever I've seen him cook something, uh-huh. I'm like, man, this guy could kill somebody. Like there's something psychopathic in him, especially when he flashes that weird smile that he does at the camera. He's like, this is not a genuine smile. So I, these, these are my issues with men. No, so uh, I, I, <laughs> no, I actually agree because like, I am not, a f- I, like I like his cooking. Like I think he's a very talented chef. But uh, I don't, I don't respond well to his brand of charm necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. It's a little too smarmy for me. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if if any skeletons fall out of the you know c- cupboard, yeah. I would not be surprised. No, <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I see that, I see that. Yeah, yeah, haldi wale um, skeleton. <laughs> stained yellow. Um, but I, yeah, but he's he's really good. I yeah. had no idea that he was, you know, like it was like an actor trapped 
in that body but uh, he was he also in uh, modern love stories and i saw people also praising where he's playing a gay man actually if i'm not mistaken oh, in like you know one of those short stories and i was re- remembering the people had been praising his performance there too so it's cool that he's kind of leveling up from short story to proper like movie but not a big state uh, uh, was he also in wasn't he also in something else like that uh, ayushman khurana movie or something like that if i'm not mistaken I can't maybe i'm thinking of some, no no i'm thinking of somebody else i'm thinking of somebody else yeah yeah um, he's got only two um credits yeah. on his but it's good uh, that he's kind of like taking the next step if he does want to become an actor right that's yeah. kind of a good cool progression he's making um yeah uh so joy man what did you think of kind of just the uk setting and like karina in it one thing that we also notice about karina in this movie is that she has no repercussions or inhibitions like she's unhinged like she will beat up people as she pleases you know <laughs> she does that twice <laughs> in the witness room once and once against the di and then and then, then, then like yeah karina was like yep yahan pe mujhe thappad marna hai Dude, it's not even a thappad man it's a full out cross like she can cross it like a left cross right cross like it's a good punch man and yeah. she does it like But quite like, a few times in the uh, yeah the the part where she slaps Ranveer Rao like she goes like open handed like yeah. fatak that was a <laughs> mummy wala slap you know yeah. <laughs> yeah that was uh, that was good i was a uh, kink unlocked <laughs> 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 that will yeah, nicely no, go in my 97 fold kya us zamane mein kya thappad the goodness uh, uh the other thing was the whole uk setting right um mm. so they say that the riot was caused by a cricket match in to begin with and then uh, they didn't never really then sort of address that after then then which happened which actually happened right a oh, really? days ago yeah this actually happened yeah no idea um and then the whole um then it come becomes about the the gurdwara scene right that's the pretty much the only place where the, those tensions rise to like this could go somewhere but then that also gets deflated so i, I again well, like, there's also the the uh, they're throwing yes. uh, bricks right so mm-hmm. and also just that visual of that street filled with you know uh, uh, fire, fire bricks everywhere i thought that was quite well done uh, i think what you're mentioning you know i think it's also just the c- constraint of the budget right mm-hmm. like and it then goes back to this being basically a tv show right where you cannot put like a you know a drone shot over the city where everybody's fighting each other and stuff like that so i think it is a very kind of even the gurdwara scene it's shot very close to each other yeah. so you don't even know how many people there are there but it feels very overwhelming the way how how many there are and i think that's very smart filmmaking in a way um is that they're doing a lot with less um but uh, yeah i feel all of that was quite genuine again like there are it's like this simmering tensions although people still live close to each other yeah. and i think at the moment now we just have bigger monsters to fight in the uk than we do with each other but i think also i think we're we're lucky because we're you know snobs in london you and me yeah. sure you know we don't live necessarily in those areas you know leicester and birmingham and stuff like that where a lot of these things are probably still happening but there's also a lot of just like communal harmony where people do get along together and there is a kind of sense of you know we all love pakode you know at the end of the day yeah. but um, yeah i think it 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 kind of touches those things but it doesn't i think it's just that this happened a couple of years ago and it's not necessarily relevant now now mm-hmm. but it's definitely things that are, exist in in the uk hmm. um what did i have as uh yeah i don't know uh oops um so i have a question would you like this story to be continued like yes yes yeah 100% on streaming ah yeah <laughs> but can i push back on that, that idea though like isn't it kind of sad that this needs to be on streaming though like it, it's it's a like we all enjoyed the movie right Uh, but i it, think it's going to it, it we are at that point in 
uh, in the culture when going to the movies is for events. It's not for these like very quiet, meditative kind of experiences. Like, I don't think, I think we are already there. And I think we have to just stop kidding ourselves that that's not where we are at already. Because it could be one of those like glass onion situations in a way, right? Like where you have like a release in theaters for a week or something like that. And maybe it's not big enough. You are right though. Like glass onion is a much bigger budget kind of like all of these stars are there and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, so it does make you want to go there and it's been a massive hit twice. I don't think Buckingham Murders is going to be some massive hit, right? Mm. Um, but also I feel is is Karina not too big for streaming though, in a way, you know what I mean? But, she, then, has she been on but then, you know, um, what was that? Uh, Janeja, Janeja, that that mm. came directly to streaming as yeah. well, right? Yeah, I do feel somewhere when I was watching Buckingham Murders, and especially because I sent you guys those clips from uh, the binge list, this ep- one shot episode, I think, with uh, Anupama Chopra and uh, Karina and Safe interviewing t- each other together, mm-hmm. and uh, she they were, she was asking like, "What do you guys watch together?" Mm-hmm. And she pretty much said, you know, Midsummer Murders and British Murder th- things. And it's like, voila, Buckingham Murders were, was made from that interview. But it also just felt like a very, like, safe ne kiya tha, main bhi karungi, you know, that kind of thing. Like, or safe Ali Khan might like this. Um, so it did have a little bit of that vibe. But I don't know, I don't... Like, how do you do it on streaming, though? I don't want this to be like a Jessica Fletcher murder she wrote kind of thing. You know, that would be too small for Karina, right? That would be like, you know, she's just solving murders from town to town kind of thing. No, if she actually did something like Grandchester or, you know, like um, one of the David Tennant, yeah, Broadchurch or like something like that. I think like a limited series, like the British model again. So it's just, you know, like six episodes, Hmm. but each of those is like an hour long. And it comes out every three years or something, <laughs> or like whenever you know they get funding. So it might be even right. like ten years. Who knows? Didn't Gillian uh, Gillian Anderson also have one? Hotel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had it. The fall. Did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was gruesome. Um, yeah, and that was a good one. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. it had Jamie Dornan in it. Yeah, like it was good. Um, so yeah, she. There's definitely a model. It's just um, they need to be a little bit smarter about like how they want to build it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, I, 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 I would go watch this in theaters. Like I, like I really. I would too. Yeah. I'll go watch Karina in the theater. Like yeah. no, no problem. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely like if this becomes like a thing. Like every two, three years, she makes one of those me- movies. Whenever she's you know holidaying over the summer in London, uh, I would be up for it. I would watch these. Like I think they're really, really good. Yeah, and get Bali Sagu to do a song every time and make her dance in a club <laughs> for it. You know. <laughs> yeah, I did like also. Uh, a uh, little aside, she had the Katrina Kaif uh, Fitur hair color going on. <laughs> <laughs> Asim was so observant of that. Like the moment she appeared and she was like, I'm so joy. She's got the Fitur hair. <laughs> 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 I, I know my audience I know Sujoy has missed me and he's missed these kind of comments so I make them to him <laughs> when he's next, sitting next to me <laughs> uh, yeah still, no I thought I'm hmm? still riding the high of the 97 <laughs> <laughs> Chalo. I think it's a uh, kind of a recommend from uh, all of us right but some uh, maybe Sujoy you're saying people can wait for streaming yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Sure, I man. say go watch this movie. I would say, I, yeah. for me, is like if you can go watch this in theaters. I think it's a worthwhile thing. Like it's 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 quite fun. I think I I, I had a really really good time. I even thought I, I do agree with you that you can kind of figure out who it will be, but I still think it's a revelation. Like I mean, if you've not watched enough of, the, I think with you and me, we've watched a lot of these. Sujoy too, we watched a lot of these. Yeah. Yeah. So you, but I think for the audience, it's intended. Maybe they have not watched all of these. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I think it still might be like a surprise to you where where it kind of ends. But also up. with genre shows like this, the award of watching this show is not in the finding of the. It's the story, yeah. right? It's the world. It's the story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think I will, that's good. Well done. Yeah. Sorry. I will say that you know, like, uh, if they they need to basically decide which boat they're in. So if they've decided that they're going to go with a big screen strategy, then I agree with Amir Khan, who this week has been talking again about like how we need to increase the window for theater releases. Mm. Um, and I agree with him. Like the moment I sit down and especially for a movie like this, which is like a mid range movie, uh, budget wise um, if I sit down and the first thing I see is like streaming partner Netflix I'm like well why did I just spend that much money on yeah. you know yeah. a ticket on popcorn on drinks when I could have just washed it at home on a subscription that I already pay so I do think that even if you are cracking those deals before the release of the film Maybe you don't need to advertise it. I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, that's hundred percent sure. Like streaming partner Amazon and stuff like that. I don't think necessarily it's needed. And that's really a relic of the of like from ten twenty years ago when you know they needed that publicity. Like you know these streaming partners, the music companies, they all needed the the publicity boost that they would get from being on the credit list. But who doesn't know what Netflix is or what Amazon is or like, you know, like doesn't look up what is coming out on Netflix or Amazon on Twitter or Google. Um, it's not it's not like they would never find out if, you know, like this movie came out on Netflix. So there really isn't any reason why we need that. But maybe they're getting a pre-sale or a production budget or something like that from, so it becomes kind of they a requirement. Need to do it. Yeah, yeah it maybe. might be. But I'm also like thinking, you know, it works when you're doing, you know, uh, Amazon or Prime or even Z. But imagine they have to be releasing soon on Shima, Shemaru Live. You know, like <laughs> that would not be like <laughs> ideal. I think. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I get like the, what you're saying that when it appears, it kind of mi- p- pisses me off too, but the movie was this good that I actually really appreciate it. So I, uh, this was, this was actually a good one. And funny enough, I was watching, uh, reading and, in- uh, listening to an interview about, uh, Rebel Ridge, that mm-hmm. movie that mm-hmm. came out mm-hmm. on Netflix, um, which is great. People should watch Rebel Ridge on Netflix. Absolutely. But, One of the people on the podcast said, you know, like the thing is, the reality is that more, much, many more people will have watched Rebel Ridge because it came on Netflix than they would ever if it was out on theaters. And that is true, too. Yes. So and I maybe that would have that was the case with Jane Jan. You know, a lot more people watched it because it was in uh, in streaming straight away than it was compared to what Buckingham Murders will be in uh, in theaters now so i think it it's kind of a good litmus test in a way that way right cool this is it for this episode um i'm glad to be back i'm glad to be recording with you again um and i'm glad that our audience gets to listen to us again amrita where can people find you online you can find me on twitter at amrita iq and keep your eyes peeled for our karina kapoor essay which is dropping soon on youtube so joy yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at 93K. And you can follow Khandan Podcast on all our socials at Khandan Podcast. I'm Anas and Bernie. Drop us an email at upodcasting at gmail.com. And like Amrita and Sujoy said, um, follow us on TikTok. Follow us on Instagram. We're dropping more. And YouTube. We're dropping more different content. Um, and the thing is, Add a comment, add a like, like do those things because it's new for us and it, it will help kind of raise our profile a little bit and we can do more of these. We're all working on some sort of extra content than just the audio that we're doing for you. And I also want to say all of this is possible because we get the support from our patrons. And again, I want to support them um, and just thank them for letting us allow to do all of these new, new avenues. It wouldn't be possible without them. So for, to thank them, we're also going to be recording a second episode that will be going live there. So if you want to listen to that episode, um, sign up for $1. The link is in the show notes. And we'll be back with a new episode next week. Thank you for listening. Party.
Yo, boy.